I'm Nicole Lovell, and I'm, I've been nominated for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. The girl you see is 13-year-old Nicole Lovell. On January 27, 2016, the world of her mother Tammy turned upside down when she opened the door to her daughter's room. Nothing's ever happened like this before, ever. Little did she know about the secret activities that unfolded behind that closed door the night before. This case examines the twists and turns in the disappearance of young Nicole from Blacksburg, Virginia. A frantic search began against the ticking clock because Nicole couldn't survive more than a day without her crucial medication. But what shocked everyone was that Nicole herself made the chilling choice to escape into the unknown that night. And while searching for her, some frightening details came to light that turned the case into a whole new direction. I think the police should look more into finding a body than try to interrogate the last person who saw her alive. What unfolded in the shadows of her bedroom door left everyone asking, what happened to Nicole? Why did she slip away from her own home? This case delves into the disappearance and murder of a young resident in Blacksburg, Virginia. Back in January 2016, the nights in western Virginia were chilly, covered in a blanket of fallen snow. While the scenery might have seemed magnificent to some, for Nicole Lovell's parents, it left haunting memories. Nicole touched many people throughout her short life. On one of those cold January nights, Nicole ran away from her home and never made it back. On the night of January 26, 2016, Nicole's mother, Tammy, sent her 13-year-old daughter, Nicole Lovell, off to bed. The nightmare for Tammy unfolded on the morning of January 27, 2016, when she went to wake up Nicole for school. Despite trying hard to push open the door and calling out to her, there was no response from Nicole. I noticed that her nightstand was up against her door. Nicole wasn't there. Little did Tammy know that after closing Nicole's bedroom door for the night, a whole different plan had been set into motion. Nicole had slyly slid her dresser in front of the door, signaling the start of her escape preparations. Nicole, unlike a typical kid enjoying a late-night TV session or chatting with friends, had other ideas. Around 1 a.m., she slid open her bedroom window, taking a dark blue blanket with a Minions character on it, and set out into the night with her backpack and cell phone. Crunching through the patchy snow, she successfully slipped away from her home at Lantern Ridge Apartments on Fairfax Road. The big questions were, where did Nicole go? And why did she choose to make this unexpected escape? With a myriad of questions racing through Tammy's mind, she didn't hesitate. The moment she realized Nicole was missing, she swiftly reported it to Blacksburg law enforcement. Nicole's family was desperate to unravel the mystery. Where was Nicole, and how was she doing? The search for answers began, fueled by concern and the need to find their beloved daughter. Cole, honey, if you see this, if you're out there, you can come to me. I'm not mad at you. Just come home. The voice you just heard was of David Lovell, Nicole's father. Nicole and her father had a tough relationship. He'd been in prison for a drug charge and had other run-ins with the law. All Nicole ever wanted was her dad's love and attention, something that seemed out of reach. To ensure Nicole could have a decent life, David chose to live apart from her. As local TV and radio stations spread the word about the missing girl, police, fire departments, and rescue teams sprang into action across the community to kick off their urgent search. Blacksburg police asking for your help tonight to find a missing 13-year-old girl. Nicole Lovell was last seen Tuesday night at her family's apartment. Police say local, state, and federal agencies are now involved. They're approaching this case from all angles. However, beneath the surface, there was another side to Nicole's story. A dark chapter that added complexity to the unfolding story. She would get sick quick without her medicine. And then it would get... Fatal. Nicole faced a tough start to life, being born with a damaged liver that required a transplant before she turned one. Despite undergoing a serious surgery, as a teenager, she still depended on anti-rejection medication twice a day to keep her illness at bay and stay healthy. Missing even a couple of doses could pose serious, potentially deadly problems, 
and that was the family's greatest worry. Finding Nicole quickly became a matter of utmost importance for her well-being. The FBI teamed up with local and state law enforcement to find Nicole. They spread the word far and wide, even amongst the local community. Lots of folks who knew the area well, especially the forests and mountains, joined in the search. Students from Virginia Tech stepped up too. They joined the mission to find Nicole, and they even brought in drones to search from above. A Virginia Tech drone used infrared technology from the skies throughout the day. They are still focusing on the mile radius or so around Nicole's home. They are getting both a ground look and a view from the air thanks to a drone from the Mid-Atlantic Aviation Partnership at Virginia Tech. The Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets pitched in as well, all working together in the search effort. Nicole's disappearance also sent shockwaves to her hometown Blacksburg as their tight-knit community known for being close and supportive, had over 1,200 people stepping up to help in the search. Everyone worked together, desperately trying their best to find 13-year-old Nicole. Amid the ongoing searches across the region, a poignant candlelight vigil also took place for Nicole and her family. Hundreds from the community gathered at Lantern Ridge Apartments, where they prayed for her safe return, sang hymns, and offered unwavering support for her family and each other. She was nowhere to be found, and there was no way to reach her. Her medication was crucial for her survival, and with each passing day, there was still no news about her. The winter days seemed to dim the hope of her parents. We love you, Nicole. We miss you. We want you home. The big question remained, where could Nicole possibly be? The answer to this looming question wasn't far off, as three days later, on January 30th, 2016, Nicole's parents faced the most devastating news of their lives. Missing 13-year-old Nicole Lovell's remains were found by police today. It's with a heavy heart that I have to announce that we've located the remains of 13-year-old Nicole Madison Lovell. Nicole's lifeless and naked body was discovered in a wooded area down an embankment just across the state line in Surrey County, North Carolina, off North Carolina Route 89. Though it might seem like a remote spot for those unfamiliar with the area, it was actually not far from a fairly traveled road. The entire community was in shock, but for Nicole's mother, Tammy, life seemed to crumble in just a matter of minutes. Because she was my everything. Nicole touched many people throughout her short life. The question of who could have committed such a horrible act against Nicole lingered in everyone's mind. In the quest for answers, Tammy received unsettling news from a neighbor. She said that before vanishing, Tammy had been playing with her daughters and casually mentioned to them about going on a secret date with a man. And she was uh, talking about this boyfriend she had that was 18 and went to college and showed some text messages off of a uh, kick and pictures. And actually, there's two other little girls up the street here that actually pointed his picture out. They go to school with her. Yes, you heard that right. 13-year-old Nicole had plans for a secret date on the night of January 26, 2016, which led her to run away from her home. Just like millions of teens, Nicole also spent a good amount of time on social media. Tammy was now worried that she might have left to meet someone she connected with online. But what actually happened in those three days after Nicole's disappearance? First, let's go back again to the day of her disappearance. When the police searched her house on January 27, 2016, they stumbled upon a vital clue in her bedroom. Nicole had left behind an important key to the mystery by her own hands. In her bedroom, the young girl had written down usernames and passwords for her online apps on the wall. So during the investigation, law enforcement was going through Nicole's digital footprint, going through her social media. The FBI computer experts traced Nicole's account information and quickly discovered that she'd frequently used Kick and Omegle chat apps, which are quite popular among teens. These apps caught their attention due to their appeal to young users. These sites allowed kids to chat with people without their family knowing and while maintaining their anonymity. However, because of this anonymity and lack of proper oversight, these sites have gained a reputation as places where predators and groomers operate. It's a concerning side to these platforms that attract users looking for secrecy. Tammy told investigators that she found Kick on her daughter's phone before her disappearance and had made her delete it. 
However, it became clear that Nicole went back to these apps and used them a lot. The usernames and passwords Nicole wrote down turned out to be the key to unraveling this terrible case. What was being found indicated that Nicole was pretty much a typical 13-year-old girl. Online, Nicole's persona reflected the struggles many middle schoolers face entering their teen years. She felt misunderstood and unloved, craving attention and wanting to be seen as an adult. She hung out with her friends and went to the mall. She, you know, wanted a boyfriend, but also she had her insecurities. Nicole longed for acceptance, especially concerning her appearance, as she believed the scars from her early surgeries were unattractive. She was perhaps a little bit depressed. She was down on herself. Experts went into Nicole's accounts and traced her through texts, photos, and other messages to understand what she was up to beyond interactions with school friends and family. One of her friends had stated that Nicole was supposed to have a, essentially a secret date that night. The FBI urgently asked Kick for Nicole's personal account using an emergency disclosure request, which led them to a surprising discovery. Nicole, during her online activities, had come across a predator she was secretly involved with. It was learned that Nicole's last communication was with an individual who had the username of Dr. Tombstone. And he went by the name Dr. Tombstone. The FBI's cyber squad worked with Kick to trace the data trail from Nicole's communications and unravel the details of her interactions with this individual. The mystery deepened when it turned out that the sole person Nicole had been talking to before she vanished was Dr. Tombstone. That was very concerning and certainly increased the likelihood that there was foul play involved in her disappearance. Cyber detectives dug deeper and uncovered that the username belonged to someone named David A. and it was linked to a Gmail account. They learned that Dr. Tombstone belonged to someone by the name of David Eisenhower. Following the digital breadcrumbs, they found an 18-year-old young man, and he was identified as David Eisenhower. David Eisenhower, we learned, was an 18-year-old freshman at Virginia Tech. He was a freshman at Virginia Tech and was attracted to the college for its excellent engineering program. He was also a standout track athlete at Wild Lake High School near Baltimore, Maryland, earning recognition as Athlete of the Week on a local TV news broadcast during his senior year. Dwight David Eisenhower was the 34th president of the United States. His brother Milton was president of Johns Hopkins. And David Eisenhower was the president's grandson who married Richard Nixon's daughter. We went the distance to tell you about one of the greatest <laughs> distance runners this state has, and his name is David Eisenhower. David is no relation to the president. Their last names are spelled differently. But this David Eisenhower left the west coast of Washington and invaded east coast running like a battle plan from General Eisenhower. I make my personal goals achievable, like, or just out of reach of achievable. That way I'm always constantly striving to better myself. If that goal becomes a record, or if that goal is past a record, or records get broken in the process, I consider that like a milestone goal, but that's not where I ultimately want to end up. I just have this internal thing saying I want to be the best. There is no reason why I cannot be as good as other people are. I will personally not stop until I reach my peak performance, which could be anywhere. At first glance, David appeared like any other freshman at the big university. However, he faced a challenge because he had a habit of sharing quirky stories trying to make himself seem as someone more experienced and more worldly than he actually was. People started doubting David's credibility because he seemed too eager to impress others, which caused a quick trust issue. Was sort of cocky, and he was like, yeah, I'm David Eisenhower. I was just on the local news. I'm a big deal. Three days after Nicole disappeared, on January 29, 2016, the police picked up David for questioning before her body was found. They brought him in because he was the last person who had seen Nicole alive. At first, the questioning seemed routine. I was bored in my dorm room and logged on to a website where you go and you just talk to random strangers. The detective informed David about Nicole's disappearance, mentioning they knew that she was on a date with him that night. David explained that when he picked up Nicole from her house that night, he had no idea she was only 13 years old. And then I see someone who probably looked like she was 11 years old climb out of a window, and I was like, oh, oh, uh, uh, not for me. David said he walked away after meeting Nicole, but the detective found it strange. It couldn't be that simple, especially since only after that did Nicole go missing. 
At that point in the interview, the detective challenged David, sensing there was more to the story. I'd stop you there, because mm-hmm. I feel like we're getting sideways. So it's not going to be possible for us to believe that account. At first, David denied having any more information about Nicole, insisting he never saw or texted her after their meeting. However, after some time, he made a strange comment that raised suspicion, a comment that made him a prime suspect in Nicole's disappearance. I think the police should look more into finding a body than try to interrogate the last person who saw her alive, who clearly left the scene. David was arrested right after the interview, and it was decided that he'd be held in custody while they continued to investigate. But the detective caught a hidden clue during the interview when David said he went to see a friend right after walking away from Nicole. This detail became a key piece of information for the investigation. After he walked away from Nicole, that he'd gone to see a friend. And that's when he identified Natalie Keepers. Natalie Keepers, a student at Virginia Tech studying engineering, had traveled from eastern Maryland to the mountains of western Virginia. Although bookish and serious, the 20-year-old had a brief romantic relationship with David when they both arrived on campus. However, their connection shifted to a close friendship soon after. I mean, David, he's a really sweet guy. He's like my best friend. Now, while the interview unfolded, investigators were busy downloading information from David and Natalie's phones. They find text messages between David and Natalie. The cyber squad, including law enforcement and the FBI, sifted through the data and stumbled upon some jaw-dropping text messages exchanged between David and Natalie. Between David and Natalie, talking about cleaning up blood, talking about the smell of blood. In those messages, they discussed cleaning up someone's blood, talked about the smell of blood, and even mentioned trying to cover up a crime scene. They're talking about trying to cover up a crime scene. These weren't typical messages for any tech student. When Natalie was confronted with these texts, that's when she finally came clean and revealed the truth. We know that you have information about this. What do you think they're falling out of your phone? According to Natalie, David was the one who killed Nicole, and she had just helped him. Natalie, how much are you involved in what we need to know? He forced me to move, to help him move her body. In the next few hours, Natalie revealed the eerie tale of what happened with Nicole on the night of January 26, 2016, and why it happened. The story kicked off in the fall of 2015, when David and Nicole began chatting online and soon developed an attraction for each other. Interestingly, David always thought that Nicole was 17 or 18 years old. We're talking, and she's like, yeah, I'm 16 or 17, I do not remember the age, she said. As they continued chatting, David and Nicole planned to meet in December 2015. Now, Nicole couldn't hide her age, and maybe David was also surprised when they met, but he decided to brush it off. I get there, and then I see someone who probably looked like she was 11 years old climb out of a window. Their growing feelings took them down a risky path, and the meeting set off a chain of events with consequences neither of them anticipated. Following that meeting, David's behavior took a sharp turn, He sensed that he'd crossed a line, something that couldn't be undone. Dread filled him as he realized the potential consequences of his actions and what they might bring down on him. David opened up to his friend Natalie that he was having a problem, and his problem was none other than Nicole. Natalie was saying that Nicole wanted to start a relationship, and David really wanted nothing to do with her. He was concerned because Nicole was still underage, and he worried about the possibility of her being pregnant after their first meeting. So David felt that he needed to get rid of her. So he attempted to put the brakes on his relationship with Nicole and also to stop communicating with her out of fear of legal trouble. However, Nicole dropped a bombshell. She threatened to take her own life if he ended their relationship. Was Nicole responsible for her impulsive reactions Or was David the one who manipulated Nicole from their very first meeting onwards? Somehow, caught in the shadow of a potential pregnancy and the fear of being discovered, David and Natalie tragically concluded that a drastic solution was necessary. In their misguided view, they believed the only way out was Nicole's death. On the night that Nicole Lovell went missing, Natalie said she and David went to a fast food restaurant to finalize the plan. Now, to carry out their plan, David and Nicole needed some specific materials, 
and to gather them a day before Nicole's disappearance, they headed to a local Walmart. We went to Walmart. There, they bought a big garden shovel, and the security cameras caught them leaving with their purchase. Little did they know, the shovel would later be linked to the crime and would be discovered with traces of Nicole's blood on it. Natalie insisted that she wasn't present there for the next part of the plan, but also admitted her involvement in the planning. What happened next was David and Nicole coordinating on the night of January 26, 2016. The plan was to take her to a secluded location to almost make it like a date. With a complete escape plan, Nicole eagerly waited for David's arrival. So when David showed up, Nicole, holding her favorite blue blanket, backpack, and phone, dashed out of her house and hopped into David's car. The pair then drove to a spot on Craig Creek Road near the Virginia Tech campus. This road is a narrow one, winding through a wooded area. Houses and trailers are scattered along the rural road, sometimes with quite a distance between them. In some parts, there's no direct line of sight from one neighbor's place to the next, which just added to the secluded atmosphere. On that chilly Wednesday night, with the temperature dropping fast, the two drove down the dark and desolate road. Around 1 or 2 a.m., David pulled over in the secluded area, and both of them stepped out into the cold. In that remote spot, Nicole had no way of knowing what was about to happen with her. David's horrifying actions were revealed by the autopsy reports of Nicole. It clearly showed that Nicole was struck in the neck with a shovel, which broke one of her vertebrae. And then he stabbed her. He killed her in the, oh, in the woods. As Nicole fell to the ground, she was still alive, and David, without any hesitation, unleashed a cruel attack by stabbing her 14 times. Seven of those stabs targeted her head and face, while the other seven struck her chest and the fatal blow came from a throat slash. Nicole, a child who had bravely faced a liver transplant and was cherished by her family, tragically lost her life on a lonely, cold January night, falling victim to a heartless murder. David, in a terrifying turn, placed her lifeless body in the trunk of his car, along with her belongings, the cherished minion's blanket and the grim tools, a shovel and a knife. He then returned to his car and drove straight home. In the warmth of his house, he spent the night, possibly haunted by the weight of his actions. Meanwhile, Nicole's lifeless body endured the cold temperatures, dropping into the mid-twenties before the first light, in stark contrast to the warmth she once knew and her family's love. That fateful night along the road, nobody reported anything unusual, and the murder slipped by unnoticed into the wee hours of the morning. The next day, on January 27, 2016, David texted Natalie, setting their sinister plan in motion. The next day, he told me that he needed help. They hopped into David's car and headed to a secluded spot just across the North Carolina line. David's phone revealed that he'd asked someone in Pulaski, Virginia, about a place to dispose of a body. Police later figured that the person may have thought David was joking and didn't grasp the seriousness of his inquiry. As they drove along North Carolina Route 89, the pair spotted a suitable spot not far from a property owned by a member of David's extended family. They took Nicole's body, stripped it, and cleaned it meticulously to erase any traces of evidence. Afterward, they dumped her remains down a wooded embankment. Nicole was located off the main road, going off the side of a mountain. They apparently had just tossed her from the edge. Texts exchanged between David and Natalie revealed that they believed the cold weather would help minimize any odor of blood, and in such a remote area, nature would handle the body's disposal. Before the murder, David had also conducted several online searches, seeking answers to questions like how long it takes to burn a body and what details police use for identification. However, his inability to find the right answers played a significant role in his eventual downfall. When Nicole's body was discovered, it was fortunately intact until that point. While the evidence had mostly stacked up in electronic form, David had clammed up about the murder at the police station. On the flip side, Natalie, gripped by fear, spilled all the details to law enforcement. Now, moving beyond screens and words, physical evidence of the murder was in hand. 
Forensic experts were piecing together the evidence to uncover who was truly responsible for Nicole's tragic fate. That really Natalie was kind of the, the mastermind behind all of this. In the thorough search of the scene where Nicole's body was found, investigators discovered crucial evidence. Scraps of skin, which remained unnoticed in attempts to clean the body by David and Natalie, were found under Nicole's nails. These tiny bits of skin turned out to be important DNA evidence, revealing that Nicole had scratched David before her tragic end. Now, while searching for clues, other law enforcement officers and forensic teams turned their attention to dumpsters and bins at Virginia Tech. A dive team plunged into the campus pond, uncovering a surprising find, a bottle of Clorox and numerous wipes coated in mysterious brown stains. Another angle on the story, the search for evidence in the police investigation of Nicole's killing continues today. State police dive teams searched a lake on Virginia Tech's campus for the second day in a row, while a criminal investigations unit is stationed in the Jefferson National Forest using surveying tools to collect evidence as well. These discoveries raised questions about their connection in Nicole's murder. The investigation took a chilling turn as blood traces were uncovered in the trunk of David's car. However, the potentially damning evidence came in the form of a bag discovered among Natalie's possessions. Inside the bag, bloodied clothing and Nicole's distinctive dark blue minion's blanket were carefully stowed away. Were these pieces of evidence meant for disposal later or kept as some macabre trophy? David found himself in serious trouble when on January 29, 2016, he was officially arrested. Natalie was arrested and charged two days later on the 31st. Stunning new details in the murder of a 13-year-old girl making national headlines. Authorities say social media likely played a role in her death. This is one of the suspects you're looking at, a former high school track star. His friend in college is also charged, and tonight prosecutors say that friend has now revealed much of the alleged plot. With this arrest, investigators are very much in the midst of what is a rapidly developing investigation. We appreciate the public's patience as we move through the investigative process, and we will continue to update the media and the public as new information becomes available. The charges included their involvement in the abduction and murder of Nicole Lovell, as well as disposing of her body. Facing the charges, both David and Natalie entered not guilty pleas, but their defense took an intriguing turn. And then the defense had a twist. We didn't anticipate. Instead of denying involvement, they shifted the focus to determining the mastermind behind the plan. David's defense suggested that Natalie played the role of the mastermind, manipulating him into carrying out the tragic act against Nicole in that secluded spot. They were going to try and show that David did not kill Nicole. It was Natalie that killed Nicole. At times, Natalie's character was portrayed as a sociopath, relishing the thrill of planning and carrying out Nicole's murder from start to finish. However, Natalie's defense argued that she didn't physically participate in Nicole Lovell's actual killing, and her attorneys insisted she wasn't directly involved in the tragic act. The evidence couldn't point to Natalie being at the scene of the murder, but it became clear that maybe she had not been physically present during the tragic act, but Natalie had significant input before and after the event. She had an active role in disposing of Nicole's body and concealing evidence, in the end, both David and Nicole were held responsible for Nicole's murder. While David carried out the act, Nicole was deeply involved in the planning, making them both equally accountable. Finally, in June 2018, David faced the consequences as he was found guilty on all counts. The verdict brought a 10-year sentence for the abduction, a hefty 60 years for first-degree murder, and an additional five years for concealing Nicole's body. However, 15 years of the sentence were suspended, and he got tagged with 20 years of probation. On top of that, he was ordered to pay $5,130 in restitution. On the other hand, in September 2018, Natalie Keepers faced her own judgment and was found guilty as an accessory to first-degree murder. Prosecutor telling the court 19-year-old Natalie Keepers helped plan the murder of the seventh grader she had never met or spoken to, saying she was, quote, excited to be part of something secretive and special with her friend, David Eisenhower. Her sentence included a hefty 40 years in prison for the accessory charge and an extra five years for concealing the body. However, five years of the sentence were suspended. 
Interestingly, she received double the recommended 20 years for the accessory charge, emphasizing the gravity of her involvement in the tragic events. The legal outcome underscored the severity of her role as an accomplice in Nicole's murder. David and Natalie are destined to spend most of their lives behind bars, a consequence that can never bring Nicole Lovell back. All she sought was acceptance and love, like many other teens, but that chance was tragically stolen from her. Her family now carries wounds that time can never fully heal, leaving an unfillable hole in their hearts. That cold January night not only left a void in the mountain town of Blacksburg, Virginia, but it also left the entire community in disbelief. The impact of Nicole's loss is a lasting, chilling reminder to the community.